Dancing the Waltz, Vladimir Putin and Karin Kneissel in 2018. Then Austria's foreign minister, she'd invited Russia's president to her wedding. A private visit, strictly. But just a few months after the Salisbury poisonings, which the EU, like the UK, had linked to the Russian state. Now, with her boxer Winston Churchill, Karin Kneissel has moved to Russia to run a think tank. She claims that after leaving office in 2019, back home she struggled to find work because she was seen as too close to Russia. Our government imploded in uh, May 2019 and I wanted to restart my life as an analyst, as a university teacher and I had to find out that there was not a single contract left and uh, that was political pressure. So when you don't have a single contract, it was not really easy to, to restart. In spring this year, I received the offer by a director of St. Petersburg University whether I would like to run an interdisciplinary institute and they mentioned what they would like to see in there and for one night I was doing brainstorming with myself and I created the name Gorky which is the acronym for Geopolitical Observatory for Russia's Key Issues. Do you understand that it is hugely controversial for a, a former Austrian foreign minister to move to Russia at a time when, when this country has launched an unprovoked a full-scale invasion of its neighbour, of Ukraine. Isn't there a danger that by being here you are legitimising the, the invasion, the war, and also the domestic repression that takes place in Russia? Well, I, so far I, I have not seen any sort of repression in my immediate surrounding. I can work here in a kind of uh, academic freedom, which I started missing when I was still teaching at various universities inside the But just the a few Union. days ago, in, in this city, not far away from this building, a young Russian woman was uh, sent to prison for seven years for replacing some price tags in a mm -hmm. supermarket with anti-war slogans. Mm -hmm. um, there is definitely uh, a wave of repression taking place in Russia. Yeah, and so what do I have to do with that? I just explained at length uh, the situation that I have been going through, so let us put it, uh, the whole thing, to the other way. Why was Karin Kneisel forbidden to work? Where is my crime? But do, do you condemn the invasion? Sir, uh, if you have uh, seen uh, my interview with your esteemed colleague Stephen Sucker, I answered his interrogation and I'm not interested in having another interrogation. I'm asking you whether the Russian invasion is, in yes, your view, entirely like illegal. Any of war, like any outbreak of war, is a violation of international law. Yes, that I just re uh, replied. It's just that you're now living yes, and, and yes, working in Yes, I'm in, living in here Russia. and then I was traveling to Russia and your esteemed colleague, Mr. Saka, did this interrogation with me. BBC did it already. So. But you're studying the geopolitical situation, yes. right? And you can't look at the geopolitical situation in Europe or the world without focusing on the, the war in Ukraine. Yes, Surely that is, yes. which well, has turned the world upside down. Yeah, no, I don't, no? wouldn't say that it has turned the world upside down, honestly not. Having written about geopolitics for 25 years, I would say a, a war that has definitely turned the world upside down is uh, the war in uh, Iraq. 2018, um, we had the Salisbury poisonings, right? then dozens of Russian diplomats. Highly likely, highly likely, yeah, to take the British term. That yeah. it was linked yeah. to the Russian state, yes. Yeah. Highly likely. Doesn't, so you don't believe that the... I don't know, it's, uh, I just quote the British uh, authorities, highly likely. But just a few months after, of course, you invited Vladimir Putin to your wedding and you danced with him and you curtsied to him. You understand how controversial that must have been then. Yeah, by the time I was the foreign minister and by the time I danced with President Putin. But you see, I have done other things in my life before and after. And honestly, it's so boring. Honestly, it's very boring. To talk about yeah. the, the wedding. Yeah. Yes. So we should just... So we, I mean, I think there are other more interesting topics we can discuss, honestly. You have no you know, regrets? I, I, I consider it as honestly boring and the dog just fell asleep and was snoring because he knows the topic. The dog's not interested, but people are amazed still. 
I'm not saying that Vladimir Putin is your close friend, but you've met He's him. Not, yeah. You've yeah. met him. From your meetings with him, what kind of a person do you think he is? He is the most intelligent gentleman, with the focus on gentlemen, and I met a few. Um, is, I mean, I've, uh, I, I would say that in the sense of what Jane Austen wrote about the accomplished gentleman in Pride and Prejudice, he, he amounts to these uh, standards. This um, idea of President Putin as a sort of a Jane Austen gentleman might surprise some when you consider what's happened over the, in recent years. Yes, I, I stick to this statement. He's the most intelligent and accomplished gentleman I ever met. Objectively, we're seeing uh, a wave of repression domestically, and we've seen Russia invade Ukraine. It's hard to classify that as a gentlemanly action. Well, uh, Tony Blair, Cameron, um, they all were involved with their governments being uh, involved in military actions, Libya, uh, Syria. Finally, I mean, you say that um, there are people in Austria who've accused you or accuse you of high treason, accuse you of being... A Russian spy. A Russian spy. Can you, to an extent, understand? No, not to an inch, not, to, not even to an inch. I don't understand it. It's just dirty fantasy.